God's grace and peace to you today and always. Through Jesus Christ, our God, our Savior, amen. Having heard the words of our sermon text this morning, let's, let's pray for his blessing. O oh Lord, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you who have been baptized into Jesus and connected with Jesus by faith. Destiny. Destiny, isn't it? Now, maybe some of you are thinking about a certain local sports team about whom, if you have been listening to sports talk and NFL kinds of things, the word destiny has been dropped numerous times in the last couple of weeks because it seems like the Green Bay Packers are heading for the playoffs. Inexplicably, surprisingly, ah, destiny. One of the th things that I've really enjoyed about all that talk about destiny is listening to sportscasters and other people on TV and radio get a little bit philosophical about destiny. Is it really possible to control your own destiny or not? And if you are able to control it, is it really destiny because really destiny is something that you don't have any control over. It just is what it is. Well, we don't need to go too deeply into what we mean when we say destiny. We don't have to explore what the ancient Greeks meant when they wrote their philosophical treatises on destiny and fate and all those kinds of things. No, that's all right. But we are going to talk about destiny. Destiny that's not based on something written in the stars or decreed by the gods of the Greeks and Romans, but a destiny that is founded purely and solidly on a righteousness from God, and that is sealed in the tender love and mercy of our God. That kind of destiny. Now, if anybody would have lived a life of destiny in this world, more than anybody else or any sports team or anything like that, and would really understand it best of all, I think if we were to pick one person out of the whole history of the world that would have a good grasp on destiny, it would be Jesus himself, right? Who else, right? After all, he was talked about at the very beginning of time with Adam and Eve, right? They fell into sin, and the, some of the first words that God spoke to them were about that seed of the woman, the promised one who would come. Destiny. And that promise was then repeated again and again and again and again to all of those descendants who were in the line that God had laid out for the one who would come. People were told generations ahead of time, there is one coming who's going to bring blessing to the whole world. Destiny. And we are told in scriptures that when the time, set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law. When the set time had fully come, when Christmas, the first Christmas, the perfect time for the first Christmas came, destiny, and Jesus was born. In our lesson today, in our gospel lesson, we see Jesus, a grown man, 30 years old, ready to start his ministry, and he knows exactly what's going to be coming up. He understands. He comes to the River Jordan with a purpose in mind, a destiny in mind, knowing what lays ahead of him. You would think that John the one who is doing the baptizing, would also understand. 
He was the one sent by God and filled with the Holy Spirit to be a powerful preacher, to prepare the way for this Jesus to come so that people would be ready for Him and they would know Him as well as John did, that this Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But yet, isn't it interesting at the beginning, beginning of our text, as Jesus comes to the Jordan River to be baptized, John says to him, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? You see, John understood the order of things, right? Jesus is the most important, and John is down here, and really, the blessings are going to come from above, right? They're going to come from the top down, and John needs to receive that baptism from Jesus. But Jesus says, let it be so. Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. You see, Jesus came to be the servant of the servants. Here is John, and he wants to be baptized by Jesus, but Jesus is saying, no, John, I need to be baptized by you. I need to be the one who is the lowest of the low, the servant of the servants, the one who has come to serve all people, so that in his baptism... He is able to fulfill all righteousness for all those who He is holding up. In fact, the whole population of the whole world, everyone is on top of Jesus and He is holding us all up as He comes to that baptism. To fulfill all righteousness, He says. Because He knows what the whole world needs. Righteousness to be right with God, to be able to look God in the eye and say, yes, God, I've done everything right. To be able to say, I am your perfect little child who does everything just right. And you and I know that we're not going to be able to do that on our own. We can't stand before our God and say, yeah, look at me. I'm the bright, shining, smiling face of your whole entire existence because I'm so awesome and great. We know our faults and we know our mistakes and we know that we don't listen when we should and we're often more troublemakers than peacekeepers. For that very reason, destiny for Jesus coming to fulfill all righteousness. And you know the kind of life he lived, starting here at his baptism, his ministry, his service, as he traveled around from place to place. What did he do? Wasn't it, wasn't it an amazing miracle after amazing miracle, preaching the good news of the kingdom of God, leading people, calling people to come and follow him so that they might know the, him as the Lamb of God? who saves the whole world. As we see Jesus in our lesson today, as he comes to fulfill all righteousness, he holds up the entire world on his shoulders as he does that amazing work. We are so thankful that he has done it for us. In fact, today, what a beautiful reminder we have in Bo's baptism of what he has done for us in baptism and now for him as well giving us the promise of a sure hope that can never, ever be taken away. You know, I don't know who's going to win the big game tonight. I don't know. Destiny might find itself in the garbage or out on the curb with the Christmas tree in a few hours. We don't know. But destiny... Not the kind that's written in the stars for astrologers to find. Not something that's written in the hearts of some fickle ancient gods. But the kind of destiny that is written in the book of life in heaven. A destiny that is written in the blood of our Savior Jesus. 
a destiny that is written in the very heart of God, a heart of eternal beating love, a destiny that can never be changed or broken. We are connected to Jesus. Bo is connected to Jesus in the waters of baptism by faith in Him. We are so connected to Jesus. That means that as we live in this world, just like He did, we walk with Him. And yes, at times that means that we are going to be serving Him with great power and glory. We are going to be serving Him with all of our might, like He did long ago, helping one another, serving one another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. But you know, it also means, like for Jesus, a time to carry the cross, a time to shoulder a heavy burden, a time to struggle. And as we pick up that cross and carry it in this life, we recall our baptisms and we know that we walk with Jesus. And when the time comes in that walk of life that we see the end of it approaching, just like Jesus as He is carrying that cross, He comes to the hill where they nail Him to the cross and crucify Him there. As Jesus suffers for each and every sin and pays the price with His own blood, He wipes clean all the sins and He provides righteousness that only he could win. As he sees destiny, he calls out with a loud voice and says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And with those same words, we can face that same moment of our passing from this world. Confident of our destiny too, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Because we know that through that doorway we walk with Jesus every step of the way in baptism. And that just like Jesus on that bright, glorious Sunday morning, the tomb was opened and there was no Jesus to be found for He had risen from the dead and now He was going to show Himself to His disciples and encourage them. And then finally, in a glorious moment, ride on the clouds of glory to heaven. We too, what waits us when our time ends and our bodies are placed in a tomb, there is yet a glorious morning to come when our tombs will be opened and we will not be found there, for else tombs will be empty. And instead, we will be ready to be gathered with all of God's people once again and ride on clouds of glory to heaven forever. Destiny. Today we praise God, we praise our Savior Jesus for showing us what true destiny really is, showing us the promise, the promise of a victory that has already been won, a victory that can never be broken or taken away, a destiny that is ours by God's grace in Jesus Christ. Destiny. It's yours. It's ours. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand. May that peace of God which surpasses all of our understanding guard and keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's join in our confession of faith this morning. We join in saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the 